Welcome to Landscape Photo Editing Sessions. I'm Rai Tarakuri. In this episode, I'm going to be processing a lava photo that I took of the Kamokuna Ocean entry of the lava. And just to give a little bit of background info, this lava flow started, the breakout started from Pu'u'o'o Crater, which is part of Kilauea Volcano. It started on May 24th, the new breakout. And on July 26th, it slowly went down the hill, and then it, on July 26th, it hit the ocean. So on July 25th, I heard that it crossed the emergency road over here. And I knew it was going to reach the ocean the same night, so I went out that night, went out for sunrise, and I was able to capture the first sunrise of the lava hitting the ocean. And that was quite nice to do that. Alright, so this lava flow is called the 61G lava flow from the scientists at the HVO observatory. So you may hear it called 61G lava flow or Kamokuna ocean entry. Alright, so to get started, I took multiple exposures. This one's exposed for the sky. This one's exposed for the foreground. And I also have two other exposures. And I'm going to use these two other exposures to smooth out the water. Because I didn't have a neutral density filter for this lens, so I wasn't able to get much of a long exposure to smooth out the water. So I'm going to stack these four photos, and that will smooth the water. So in terms of editing, I want to do this as much as possible in one exposure in Lightroom because if I tried to do using luminosity mask to darken down the sky, it wouldn't really work that great because I want the whole sky to be darkened down. So I'm going to use Lightroom's tools to darken down the sky. So first of all, the exposure is a bit bright, so I'm going to take that down to around minus 0.7. I'm going to take down the highlights quite a bit to darken down the sky. I'm going to boost up the shadows to get more detail back into the shadows and also the blacks to get more detail around the dark parts. And then I'm going to increase the contrast quite a bit to compensate for the lost um, black point or the lifted black point so that it doesn't look so flat and then I want to increase the vibrance to boost up the color in the sky and the lava in the ocean and one last thing I'm gonna make this a bit warmer so that the sky has a bit more orange or pink and the whole image isn't as blue. Alright, so I have my profile corrections enabled and I'm also going to remove chromatic aberration since in case there's any. And then I'm going to increase the sharpening. Alright. Alright, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the settings to the sky exposure. Alright, to compensate for the um, exposure, I'm going to make it just around the same exposure as this. So it's going to be around plus 1.3. But I want to make it just a little bit darker for the sky. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this sky instead of this one. So I want this one just to be a bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste these settings to the darker exposure for the one I'm going to use for stacking. Same thing with the other one. Alright, I'm going to make sure these are all around the same exposure. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and select them all and open them as layers in Photoshop. Once they're open in Photoshop, 
I want to use these two exposures for the main foreground and sky. And then, and then I'm going to use the all four for stacking. So first I'm going to duplicate these layers. And then I'm going to use these layers for stacking. So stacking is basically layer averaging the opacities. So the second layer is going to be 50%. Third layer is going to be 33%. And the fourth layer is going to be 25%. So now the water is much smoother now that it's combined all these exposures. And I'm going to select them all and then control E and that will merge the layers to one. All right, I'm going to set this one aside. And then I'm going to replace the sky with this one so that it fixes the blown out highlights. So I'm simply going to use the quick selection tool and then just select out the sky. And then I'm going to use the select and mask or the uh, refine edge tool and then I'm going to increase the radius to 2. OK. And then I'll go to this layer, make it visible, and create a layer mask, and it will automatically apply my selection. And I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so now the sky has been replaced. And then next thing I'm going to do is mask the ocean in for this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a black layer mask, holding down Alt and clicking the layer mask button. And then I'm going to use the white brush, a large soft one. And I'm going to paint in the ocean. I'm also going to paint in some of the foreground or the rocks over here because it will smooth out any um, of the smoke coming out of here that's blocking the sky. So also this portion of the sky is going to benefit from being painted on. So the smoke kind of disappeared now that was going into the sky. And I'm just going to check on this, see if it's good. All right, I think that looks good. So there's just a little bit of over here that I want to erase. I want the edges of this plume to be affected. And I'm just going to paint some of the edges of this landscape just to smooth out the smoke. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, next thing I want to do is get rid of the any spots I have in the photo. So the sensor dust, my sensor was quite dirty. And also the people that's on the other side of this flow over here. So I'm just going to use the spot healing brush and then uh, find my sensor dust and clone that out or just brush that out and also the people. So 
So I'm just going to remove this sign over here. All right, I'm going to look for more of the sensor dust. All right, so that should be good enough. The next thing I want to do is increase the contrast in the sky. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is create luminosity mask so that I can select the midtones of the sky because I just want to increase the contrast just in the mid-tones and some of the darker parts. I don't want the bright uh, highlights to be affected or I, want, I don't want them to be brightened. So I'm going to go ahead and create luminosity mask. And I'm going to go to my channels, select mid-tones 2 and then create a curve adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to my highlights and just make a point. And then go to my shadows and bring it down a bit. All right, I'm just going to adjust this point a little bit so that the midtones here are darkened too much. Now I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go to my selection over here. Make the same selection. I'm going to invert the selection and then fill it with black. So that this is only affecting the sky portion. So I'm noticing this halo over here. And I don't want that, so I'm going to adjust the this point over here a bit more to add a bit more uh, brightness to some of these midtones. All right, that's pretty good. Alright, the next thing I want to do is take down the brightness of these uh, bright parts over here. So I'm going to go to my channels that I created the luminosity mask. And then go to some of my brights. I'm going to go ahead and select brights 3 and then create a new uh, layer. And then fill it with the same selection. And then I'm going to use a levels adjustment to increase the contrast so that I just want to select the absolute brightest parts. So I'm just going to adjust the midtone slider and the blacks a little bit. All right. So I have that selected. I'm going to go ahead and use a curve adjustment and bring down the exposure on the bright parts. I don't want the top part to be affected, so I'm just going to use a black brush and brush it out. All right, so I'm going to make some fine tune adjustments. So I'm noticing this part is a little bit too dark so I'm just going to use a white brush with a low opacity so around 10 percent and then I'm just going to brush on the parts that don't need to be dark so using a black brush I should be using so I'm using the black brush and just going over multiple passes to make sure it's accurate.
All right, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna darken it a little bit more. All right, that looks nice. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is increase the contrast of the, some of the foreground elements over here. So the lava and this plume of steam over here. So I'm gonna add a curve adjustment layer and I'm just gonna go to some of the bright part of the plume and then just go to the foreground of here and bring it down a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna invert this curve adjustment layer mask and just use the brush tool to paint this in. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm noticing this spot over here, I'm just gonna remove that bit of lava that was captured in the long exposure. So that streak of lava doesn't look that great. All right. The next thing I want to do is increase the contrast in the ocean a little bit. So I'm just going to add a bit of a S curve to the water. Invert that and just paint it in the water. All right, that's pretty good. The next thing I wanna do is add a bit more contrast in the sky. So I'm just gonna use um, the target adjustment tool and then bring down the exposure on the dark part and bring up the exposure on the brighter part to add more contrast. And that's pretty good. And I'm just going to use a large brush to paint that in. All right, that's good. And just another uh, contrast adjustment on this top part, just to darken it down a little bit. All right, that's good. And now I'm noticing this steam plume is kind of messing up with the color making a color cast a brown color cast on the clouds so I'm just going to create a new layer and change the blending mode to color and I'm going to use my brush tool and uh, sample the portion of the sky that's not that doesn't have a color cast I'm going to use a low opacity and brush on the color onto the clouds to fix the color cast. All right, that's pretty good. And maybe I'll just take the passy down a bit just to add a little bit of the color back in. Okay. Another thing I want to do is get rid of the halo over here. And this halo is caused by doing extreme editing in Lightroom. So taking these sliders to extreme, like bringing the shadows up a lot, bringing the highlights down by around 90 in the 90s. 
so that'll create a halo on the edge so I'm just gonna fix that simply by using a dodge and burn layer so I'm gonna set the layer to soft light to create the dodge and burn layer and then I'm gonna make a selection of just the brightest parts So I'll just go to maybe brights 3 and you can see it kind of selects the halo and the edge is slightly brighter so it's doing a decent job of selecting that part. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hide the selection with Control H and using a black brush with the low opacity. I'm going to paint along the edge just to darken it. So maybe 20% would be better. Alright. Alright, so the before and after. So it's much better now. And it's largely eliminated. Alright, so the last thing I want to do is add a bit of a glow effect just to kind of smooth out the uh, rough or crunchy highlights or contrast. So using a clone stamp layer with Control Alt Shift and E, that'll create a clone of everything that's visible. I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur to it. All right, so 20 is, I'm going to apply 20 radius, and then I'm just going to make it maybe 8%, just a light, very light effect. I'm going to add a curve adjustment to create a glow effect, and then create a clipping mask so it only affects this layer. And then with this, I'm just going to add an S-curve. And if I zoom in here, and hide and hide the layer so it kind of bleeds the highlights and shadows and creates kind of a dreamy effect all right so that's basically it so I first started with my base layer for the foreground I then added in my darker layer just to fix the highlights in the sky. I added in my stacked layer for the ocean to smooth out the water. I went ahead and cloned out the people and some of the dust spots on the sensor. I added a mid-tones contrast for the sky uh, and then one for the bright highlights in the sky. A contrast to uh, boost up the lava and the steam plume. A little bit of contrast added to the sky. More to the sky and then finally the top part of the sky. I removed the color cast from the smoke. So the clouds, bottom portion of the clouds had a bit of a color cast. And then I fixed the halo on the edge with the dodge and burn layer. And finally a glow effect layer. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.